Welcome, brothers and sisters. So we want to continue with our teaching on the faith dimension. Faith dimension. Glory be to God. Faith dimension. Faith dimension. Hallelujah. Our texts, again, is Galatians chapter 3. Verse 11b, Galatians chapter 3, verse 11b. For the just shall live by faith. For the just shall live by faith. Are you the just? Are you living by faith as a Christian? And one who has come into God through Jesus Christ. Walking by faith is not optional. It is a requirement and it is a command. And so that's why the scripture there says, the just shall live by faith. For the just shall live by faith. In um, part one of faith dimension, part one, we focused on the importance of the word and the spirit of God in developing and building faith. The importance of the word and the spirit of God in developing and building faith. In fact, you should know that this is the foundation of faith. Because as we know, the Bible says it very clearly. As we have seen, Romans chapter 10, and we will go there, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Galatians chapter 3, verse 2. Here, Apostle Paul was speaking to the Galatians. And he asked them, he said, this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Hearing of faith. In the same Galatians chapter 3, verse 5, he said, therefore he, who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you? Does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So here, the scripture makes it clear that all that we have been desiring from God, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the blessings of God, we receive it by faith. So if you were to summarize what we treated on the fifth dimension last time, or fifth dimension part one, with our focus on the importance of the word and the spirit of God in developing and building faith, you will agree with some categorical statements that we make. That faith dimension is the dimension of the spirit of God. Because it is the spirit that reveals the word of God. You know, the Bible says that the word of God or the things of God is uh, it's foolishness to the mind, the carnal mind. It is foolishness. And it, the things of God are spiritually discerned. So the spirit of God is the one who gives the revelation of the word of God. Is the one who helps us to hear the word of God. And as we have heard, faith comes by hearing. So the word and the spirit of God are the foundation in developing and building faith. So let me repeat that statement again. The faith dimension is the dimension of the spirit of God. It is by revelation, knowledge. So faith is by revelation, knowledge of the word of God. Note this. 
Faith is not an assumption, but a revelation. You know, at times, people make assumptions. And they stubbornly stay with it and say it is faith. Faith is not stubbornness. At least in all the categories of faith, whether from no faith to little faith, to great faith, to full faith, there is no category called stubbornness faith. But I hear sometimes people describe that and say stubborn faith. Okay, I'm sure we understand what that means. However, let it not be by assumption. So faith is not an assumption. We have seen that faith dimension is greater, higher, better than the logical and sensual knowledge that we have. The foundation of faith is developed by the word of God and the spirit of God. We must start by remembering Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Have faith in God. That's what Jesus said. You know, often when we quote that scripture, Mark chapter 11, verse, uh, verse 22 and 23, or sometimes 23 on its own, we forget that 23 cannot stand without 22. Mark chapter 11, verses 22 and 23, let's reconnect. It says, have faith in God, for as surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Now, look at some things, key words in those two uh, verses. The first thing to note is that the basis of faith is God, which is what Mark chapter 11 says, have faith in God. You have faith in God. It is in God. Now, see that how that plays out. When you now read verse 23, it says, for as surely I say to you, if you say to this mountain, because of the faith you have in God, you say to this mountain, be cast into the sea and be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes. Believes what? Believes. Believe in yourself. Believe your own work. Believe what? Believe God. <laughs> Believe God and who God is, which is all that the Word and the Spirit does, teaching us, revealing to us who God is, and we have faith in God. Therefore, we speak according to the revelation of God that we have. Believes that those things he says will be done. Again, note that word, will be done. Will be done. Be done by who? <laughs> Glory be to God. So, there is one who does things. Believes that those things he says will be done. Will be done. He will have whatever he says. So who does what you say? God. Hallelujah. God Almighty. In all that the Lord has set and commanded and decreed to be. And so by faith, we bring 
to manifestation that which God has ordained. Faith in God, not faith in man, not faith in ourselves, faith in God. Glory be to God. You know, when I came to this point of what he says, believe that those things he says will be done. I underline that word will be done. With my engineering uh, background, I know a bit of science. I know that the law of motion says that all things continue in its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line, except compelled by a force to act otherwise. Which means that nothing happens just on its own. Nothing happens just on its own. If you leave a piece of rock on a table, it ought to stay there. If it moves from there, a force has moved it. <laughs> the same happens in this spiritual life. So, if you have faith in God and you're speaking in God according to the word of God, which we call the will of God revealed in the Bible, which is the word of God, by the revelation of the spirit of God, the understanding or the wisdom of God by his spirit, then you have a line with God and God does his will. It is always the will of God. Faith dimension, brothers and sisters. So never assumption, but the word of God revealed by his spirit that you hear, I hear, and we believe because we have faith in God. Of course, to have faith in God, you have to come to Jesus Christ. You have to come to Jesus Christ because he is, he is the one who brings you, who brings me, who brings us, who brings anyone into God and alignment with the will of God. Just like I said before, that the things of God is foolishness to the carnal mind. For the carnal mind cannot please God, and cannot be subject to the things of God. It's only through Jesus Christ, the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by him. And Jesus declared this confidently and boldly. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. So, faith in God. Today, part two, I want us to quickly look at the unconventionality of God in accomplishing his will the unconventionality of God in accomplishing his will. Still anchoring on that Mark chapter 11, verses 22 and 23. We'll kick off there. So here, the Bible says, have faith in God. For as surely I say to you, whoever, whoever says to this mountain, but again, we have established that whoever, because you've got to have faith in God. And how do you have faith in God that you don't know? And so that's how Christ brings us into God. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, will be done. So he believes that what he says, God will do it. He will have whatever he says. 
Now, as human beings, at the level of logic and sensual knowledge, we struggle to figure out how God will do what we have said. That's why we need to, again, appreciate the unconventionality of God in accomplishing his will. Glory be to God. For you to walk in the faith dimension, you have to come to the reality, the realization, the understanding and appreciation of the unconventionality of God in accomplishing his will. So God can do and will do anything by his omnipotent power. God can and will use anything available and as he chooses to accomplish his will. Glory be to God. And so that's why I'm emphasizing us understanding his will because Jesus Christ brings you, brings me, brings us into God and thereby aligns you, aligns me, aligns us with the will of God, as I earlier said. So when one who is in God Ask God anything, speaks according to God's will. Ask God anything according to his will, or ask God or speaks anything according to God's will, God performs it. That's his promise. Hallelujah. So the point today that we are making is that how God will do it is not your business. This is the point about the unconventionality of God in accomplishing his will. How God will do it is none of your business. It's not your business. Hallelujah. Often, our logical sense, our sensual knowledge wants to figure out, wants to think out for God how this thing which we have spoken according to God's will, revealed by his spirit and his word will come to pass. This is why we have to understand this dimension of faith. Glory be to God. So I want to make that statement again. That how God will do his will is not your business, but God's business. Yours is to do what? Have faith in God. God's own is to deploy all his resources in heaven, on earth, and beneath the earth, both physical and spiritual, to accomplish his will. And you have to know that you have become part of his will when you are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's quickly look at a few examples in the scripture. We want to look at Abraham in uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. We quote it very easily. Abraham believed God and it was accounted for him as righteousness. He hoped against hope. He trusted the God who called those things which do not exist as though they were. But let's go back and see how far he got there. Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. Very quickly. Let's read from verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram. And you remember, 
In chapter 2, I've already, God has given him uh, the promise. Now the Lord said in chapter 12, verse 1, now the Lord has said to Abraham, get out of your country and all that and told him. So Abraham had started the journey. So chapter 15, I start again, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the hair of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? Then Abraham said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my hair. Four, and behold, the word of the Lord. What came to Abraham? The word of the Lord. Everybody say the word of the Lord. This is the foundation of faith, brothers and sisters. The word of the Lord revealed by the Spirit of God. Verse 4. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, This one shall not be your hair, but one who will come from your own body shall be your hair. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven and count the stars. If you are able to number them, and he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Glory be to God. Can you follow that now? He got the revelation. He had the word and he received the revelation. And he believed. And I want to tell you that it took many years, many years before the fulfillment came. About 25 years. But Abraham walked with that word and that revelation. And that's why I say faith transcends the present circumstance, event, or times. Faith sees in the eyes of God. Faith sees the invisible. So Abraham was walking without a child, but yet he, he remembers what God said. Inside him was the revelation of his children being as the stars in the firmament. He says, uh, let's read that verse 5 again. He said, then he brought him outside and said, look now toward heaven and count the stars. If you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. Hallelujah. And Abraham believed. But to show you that man always tries to bring the logic in. In verse 16, Sarah, Abraham's wife, came and said, look, this thing is too much. Here is my mate, go into her, that you may have a child. And Abraham did. Praise the Lord. But God still told him, this is not what I meant. <laughs> this is your own logic and sensual knowledge. But what I have spoken is from you. And from Sarah, your wife, who now became Sarah, as you would see from verse 18. So Abraham walked, grew. Abraham walked with knowing the word of God, practicing the word of God, and till. He made the word and the revelation of God his reality. Abraham believed God, and it was accounted for him as righteousness. 
And so the fulfillment of God's promise came to pass. If you look at Genesis chapter 17, you will hear when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, you know, gave all that promise. So Abraham walked with God, grew in faith. That's why we're talking about faith dimension, the foundation of the word and the spirit of God. What I've been walking, when would it be? How would it be? But he knew there was something inside of him. Something inside of him. Let's look at And through that one seed of Isaac, God fulfilled his promise to um, Abraham. If God told you your seed will be like the stars in the firmament, what would your mind think of? But well, God did it in his own time, in his own way, and Isaac came forth. Exodus chapter 14, Exodus chapter 14, the children of Israel. God brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. And again, it's always about hearing the word of God. Look at Exodus chapter 14, let's start. Say now the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel, speak to them that they turn and come before Pi Hahiro, between Migol and the sea, opposite Baal Sivon. You shall come before it by the sea, for Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are bewildered by the land. The wilderness has closed them in. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart, so that he will pursue them, and I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army, that... The Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. So they did so, and Pharaoh and his army pursued the children of Israel. And the children of Israel panicked, were frightened. If you look at verse 10, it says, And Pharaoh drew near. The children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, but Moses knew what he heard. He heard from God that God would take honor to himself. How he will do it, he doesn't know. Here are defenseless people in the wilderness, now trapped. The Red Sea in front of them. The army of Pharaoh and Pharaoh coming behind. Where do we go? Hallelujah. But Moses knew that he heard from God, the one that does not fail, that he will take honor over Pharaoh. Hallelujah. So Moses knew this is for God's honor. If you jump to verse 13, why the children of Israel were complaining? Moses was seeing the victory of God. How? He does not know. All he knows is that God can use anything and will use anything to do his will. And I know God will use anything to do his will in your life. It doesn't matter how it looks. You have to come to this dimension of faith to know that Heaven and earth, beneath the earth, all things belong to God. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the worlds, and they that dwell therein. Verse 13, and Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. See the salvation of the Lord. That's all he knew. How? He had no idea. Stand still 
and see the salvation of the Lord. I feel in my spirit to announce to somebody who's hearing me now, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Oh, you may have fought, you have been defeated. Oh, they may have fought, you are down and out. But I say to you, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Lord will come through for you. He will never be late in the name of Jesus Christ. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. Hallelujah. He said, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Oh, little did they know that God uses and chooses to use whatever is available to do his will, but he must do his will. How would you have thought that Pharaoh with his army and mighty weapons of war, what God would choose to use will be water, hallelujah, the sea. Oh, glory be to God. At another time, God has rained brimstone and fire from heaven, what I call divine bombs, and broke the heads of the enemies of his people. He chooses whatever, and he uses whatever is available. But his will must be done. So Moses said, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Beloved brothers and sisters, you know the conclusion of this contest. And the Lord fought. The Lord used the Red Sea, the same Red Sea that was supposed to be the trap. The Lord used that Red Sea to finish the Egyptians and the army that pursued the children of Israel. Let's just read that just to remind ourselves. 21, then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind and all that night and made the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. There is something in the Lord's resource that is called east wind, east wind. So the wind blew here. The wind of God will blow for you. I say the wind of God will blow for you. The wind of God will blow for me. You know, I like that song that says, if he can use anything, he can use me. Hallelujah. The Lord God will use anything and he will choose to use whatever pleases him to perform his will in your life. So by faith, what do you do? Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I have many more examples for us to look at. You remember in Luke chapter 9, verse 16, Jesus Christ used two fishes and five loaves to feed 5,000. And if you go to Matthew chapter 15, 29 to 39, where he fed 4,000. Hallelujah. So... God chooses, he has resources. Don't try to figure out, you must come to this dimension of faith, of the unconventionality of God in accomplishing his will. So in Abraham, Abraham's life, he used Isaac to fulfill that promise. To Moses and the children of Israel, he used the Red Sea to finish the army of Egypt with their chariots and their horsemen and everything and gave deliverance and victory to the children of Israel. If we come to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 5, verses 17 and 26, you remember the early apostles, while they were preaching, were locked up. Acts chapter 5. He says, then the high priest rose up and all those who were with him 
which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation. And they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in common prison. 19. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go, stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest and those with him came and called the council together with all the elders of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. 22, but when the officers came and did not find them in the prison, they returned and reported, saying, indeed, we found the prison shut securely and the guards standing outside before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. 25 says, so one came and told them, saying, look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Oh, glory be to God. Our God will and can choose anything and use anything to do his will. It is his business to do his will. Our business is to do what? Have faith in God. Spend time knowing, as we are speaking today, the resources of God that is available to you according to the word of God and receive the revelation of his spirit so you can appreciate that when the Lord fights for you, nobody can stand against him and nobody can stand against you. I have personal testimonies that I could share, but I'll just uh, hold that for another time. I want us to just close looking at Elisha, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16. 2 Kings 6, 16. Very quickly. So this was about the king of Assyria coming with his army and surrounding Elisha. Maybe I step a little back and read from verse 12. And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king. And Elisha the prophet who is in Israel tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. Hallelujah. So he said, Go and see where he is that I may send and get him. So if we jump from there to verse 15. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And the servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. I can imagine what that servant did after he saw this. In fact, he would have immediately started jumping and walking towards them, knowing that he's protected. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. But Jesus said to us, blessed are those who believe, even when they have not seen. Why? Because they know the word and they have the word. What are you to believe? You have to believe God and his word and the revelation of his word by his spirit. What has God said to you? Don't try to figure God out. Relax. Speak like Moses. Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Because he knows that God can. And God will use whatever is available and whatever he chooses to use.
to perform his will. I pray for you. I pray for your family. I pray for everyone connected here that the hand of God will move now in your life. What you are holding on to God for, according to his word, have faith in God will be performed in your life and in your family in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are connected here and you have not given your life to Christ, that's the only way to come into the will of God. That's the only way, brothers and sisters. There is no other way. Jesus said it boldly, clearly. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. And as we have heard, this faith dimension, this life we're talking about is by coming to Jesus Christ. So I want you to put your faith in that provision of God, the salvation you know, we said it last uh, time, salvation comes by faith. Because the Bible says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. So pray with me and we will take a few more prayer. Pray with me and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving me your son, Jesus Christ, your gift. To bring me into your will. I repent of my sins and I ask forgive me all my sins. And let the blood of Jesus wash me now. Heavenly Father, please give me your Holy Spirit and transform my life. Transform me into the glorious image of the children of God. Make me indeed your son and help me by your spirit to do your will henceforth in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, I want you to pray for yourself because you can't hear this kind of word and just go without applying it. I want you to pray for yourself. So we want to pray. Is about growing. You have to raise yourself about the faith dimension. Make up your mind. It is not optional to live by faith. It's not optional to walk by faith. The just shall live by faith. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. That's why I keep emphasizing faith is not assumption. Many people have made mistake and have paid dearly for making assumptions and said it is stubborn faith. I've said maybe we understand what they mean, but stubbornness isn't a good thing. Anyway, you know that. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith dimension is the dimension of the spirit of God. Faith sees in the eyes of God. It is by the revelation, knowledge of the word of God. Never assumption. And don't try to figure God out. Just know that he is omnipotent. He can and will choose whatever he pleases in heaven, on earth, beneath the earth, just as we have seen a few examples. A few examples. Let us pray. What is that thing in your own life? Go ahead, tell him now, Lord. Oh, I give it to you. The omnipotent God. 
The promises of God, the resources of God are limitless, infinite, all over the Bible. The word of God. And when you take time and meditate and spend the time with the spirit of God, the spirit of God speaks to you. And he has been speaking. And he doesn't, sometimes God speaks to you, not even when you are praying, if you are in Christ. But you just have to learn to grow by the word and the spirit of God. So you make the word and the revelation of God a reality in your life. And you continue to grow by it. Like I said, I said there are testimonies, but I just, I just hold it uh, today. We'll talk about that another time. So today it's for you. What is that thing you're trusting God for? And you know, this is the will of God. Because you are in Christ. And Christ has brought you into God. And the Bible says, have faith in God. And if you have faith in God and ask God. And say to this mountain, it will be done. Done by God. And I've told us, things get moved. Because there is someone who moves them. Whether by his spirit, by his angels, by his power, or by his decree that things should happen, it is all God behind. And I wanted to also let, remind us that on the other side, yeah, we'll come to that maybe the next teaching. Things just don't happen, yeah. On the other side, don't want to talk much about that. That's why. Uh, it's easy for people to be deceived because the other forces can also move things and people get deceived by that. In fact, we are studying the book of Revelation now and you could see that the negative force can also move things and deceive people. And that's why we have to be very clear about standing in God, living by faith, walking in faith dimension. Let us pray. Now go ahead and commit that situation, that circumstance, that matter, that desire, that goal, that objective to God. Let us pray. Let's agree by faith. And it will be yours, and it will be mine, and it will be ours in the name of Jesus. Of course, why I'm emphasizing Christ and the will of God is that you may know that this is about you living and fulfilling God's will. It is not about wealth. It is not about fame. It is not about glory in yourself. No, it is all about God's will. This is God's provision for us to do his will. So go ahead and ask your father. The just shall live by faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Blessed are those who believe even when they have not seen with their physical eyes, but they have received the eyes of faith that receive the revelation of the word of God. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. And let's round it off here. Let's bring our prayer to a close as we agree according to the word of God. Our God will do it. He never says no. When his children call on him. No, he, he does not say no. When the centurion came to him. 
He said, I will come. In fact, the centurion had to tell him, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. Hallelujah. The man that brought the mute child to him, he said, if you can, if you can, if you will, you can heal my child. And Jesus said, I will, I will. He always says, I will to his children. I will. Don't let anybody tell you God does not want to do you good. God wants to do you good. God wants to do me good. God wants to do us good. And that's why he has taught us to walk in faith dimension. So go ahead and ask him, Father, This is my desire in the name of Jesus. According to your will, according to your promise, let it be done for me in the name of Jesus Christ. Now we agree. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. We appreciate your omnipotence. You are the omnipotent God. You are the infinite God. You can do whatever pleases you. You will use anything that pleases you. You are the one who caught the donkey or the ass to speak with human voice. You are the one who fed the multitudes with two fishes and five loaves of bread. You are the one who used the Red Sea to finish the enemies of your people. Almighty God, all our needs, all our desires, all that concerns us, as we have asked in agreement, we stand by faith and we say, let it be done unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. All that your children have asked, all they will ask, all we will ever ask according to your will, according to your word, oh God, let it be done for us. And so, Heavenly Father, we'll pray that our lives will glorify you. Our lives will greatly honor you. That at the end, like Paul, we will say, we have fought a good fight. We have run a good race. We have kept the faith. And we look forward to your crown. Thank you, our Lord and our King. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen.